root certificates, intermediate certificates, trust stores, certificate chains. What is all this stuff and why should you care? I'm going to start with the second question and work backward from there. It's important to have at least a basic understanding of what these pieces are and how they fit together in order to protect all the machine identities your organization currently uses every day. Companies spend about $10 billion annually protecting human identities, but are just now beginning to de dedicate the same resources to machine identities. The bad guys know that machine identities have historically been an afterthought, and so they're actively targeting them more and more. Machine identity compromise can be tied to the vast majority of high profile breaches in recent years. Think about Equifax breach in 2017 and SolarWinds late last year, both of which could have been prevented with proper machine identity management in place. That is why you should care because this affects you, it affects your company and your livelihood. To understand TLS machine identities a bit more, let's break down all the components. Simplified to the most basic terms, a TLS certificate is a digital file used to establish an association between a public key and an identity. When you visit your bank's website, for example, the TLS certificate presented by the website is inspected by your browser in order to determine whether or not you should trust the connection to that site. In the background, the browser is inspecting not only the TLS certificate presented by the site, but also the entire chain of trust all the way back up to the trust anchor, also known as the root certificate, the root CA certificate. The root CA certificate is different from other certificates in that it is self-signed and the issued, which, which means the issued to and the issued by fields are going to match in that case, right? And it will also have a much longer validity period than end entity certificates would. These root CA certificates are heavily guarded and kept as secure as possible because they provide that root of trust for the entire organization and sometimes the internet. If a malicious party somehow gets their hands on the root CA certificate and private key, that can be a huge breach and they can begin issuing certificates that are then implicitly trusted by the organization and, and users worldwide. For that reason, end entity certificates are not typically signed by the root CA. Instead, the root certificate authority issues a subordinate or intermediate CA certificate, and then that is used to issue end entity certificates for web applications, servers, load balancers, and all the other infrastructure being protected by TLS machine identities. Another important thing to note is that there can be really any number of CAs in the certificate chain. The root certificate authority is capable of issuing multiple intermediate CA certificates, perhaps for different use cases or environments in the organization. Likewise, each of those intermediate CAs can turn around and issue additional subordinate CA certificates. There's no limit on the number of intermediate CAs between the root and the end entity certificate, though there are certainly best practices. To sum everything up, you've got your bank's entity certificate on one side at the browser and the root CA certificate or trust anchor at the other end. In between those two, you can have any number of intermediate CA certificates. And when you as an end user visit the site, the browser is going to traverse up that entire chain from the end certificate to the intermediate certificate to the next intermediate, however many there are, all the way up to that root CA certificate validating each one along the way.